Ah, Marcus Conti reporting. Been talking about a few things today. Ah, nice to be outside in New York City. <laughs> Back out in the park. I hope my camera doesn't freeze. Talk about Venezuela coop. Talk about uh, Covington kids, Mega Hat kids. Fallout. A little bit about Caesar Sayak. You remember him? The uh, Patsy Bomber. I'll talk about him. And let's talk about the yellow vests. Yellow vest, Act, Act 10, yellow vest in France. What's going on? First, the reading. It was terribly dangerous to let your thoughts wander when you were in any public space or within range of a telescreen. The smallest thing could give you away. A nervous tick. An unconscious look of anxiety. A habit of muttering to yourself. Anything that carried with it the suggestion of abnormality. Of having something to hide. In any case, to wear an improper expression on your face. To look doubtful when a victory was announced, was itself a punishable offense. There was even a word for it in Newspeak. Face crime, it was called. Ooh, George Orwell, 1984, chapter five. I keep running Orwell because his prophecies are spot on in our time. He wasn't the only one, but he's a, a, a significant significant kind of guy right now how do i look <laughs> it's cold out again i want to try to my camera freezes up when it's cold that's why i'm not outside a lot anyway so so what's that all about what's orwell talking about face crime uh, face crime a fucking face crime come on in america face crime what happened in covington let's start there the Covington High School kids, right? What was his crime? Smirking while white. In defiance of what the establishment has established as anti-American racist. Wearing a hat, red hat. Now, symbolism is pretty powerful. Let's not discount it. You say, oh, it's just a hat. But with the KKK, oh, it's just a hood. Or... You know, or it's a, or in the gangs of New York, you know, like the, the Crips and the Bloods. Oh, it's just a, it's just a, a red scarf or a white scarf, whatever scarfs they use to identify themselves as a Crip or a Blood. So the significance of symbolism should be discounted, but no one has declared, and certainly not a bunch of high school kids, have declared a mega hat as a racist object. Rather, it's patriotic. They're in Washington, D.C., and they're, they're, they're on a school trip at the Lincoln Monument, right? I'm not going to kick it too long, but it is, you can see what Orwell is talking about, that the only crime committed in the eyes of the lunatic, out-of-control left, media you know and the the you know the people gaslighted by it is a face crime that he smirked and when all the analysis when all the evidence was in you realize that it was the black racists behind him and behind the Indian man egging on the egging on agitating right and of course there's no no consequence because because of the subjugation of blacks or 2,000 years in slavery or whatever it is, right? So we can't, you can't point out the default of the black, the racist black screaming, I want to rape your mother. That's where we're at. So the, the, outstanding, the outstanding citizen is guilty of a face crime. The blatant racist is, a, is, is free to go because black women are the heart of the Democratic Party. Uh, so let's talk about Venezuela. This is big. I, I know it's, it's not a sexy subject. People want to put their head in the sand on this one and not accept regime change by their, you know, especially the bootlicker, you know, Trump supporters. Fuck off. Turn it off now. It's time to go, jerk-offs. Uh, so 
I, I mean, I try. I've been trying to be empathetic and apolo, you know, polite. But you guys, you guys are idiots. <laughs> you can't. You got to look at the facts. Stop. Stop saluting the 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 master, and look at the facts. Trump, Pence, Pompeo, and Bolton are fucking so wrong in this Venezuela thing. This is a U.S. coup. All right. So what's going on in Venezuela? I've already talked about it. right now. On the ground in in Venezuela is a situation where they have a president. His name is Nicolas Maduro. He was elected, right? He he succeeded uh, uh, Hugo Chavez, who was in office from '99 to 2014 or 2012. Yeah, 2000. Yeah, 2012. And so. Uh, so the new guy, uh, Maduro, Nicolas Maduro, took over when Chavez died of cancer. Now Maduro has not only not only did Chavez die, but Maduro has said that the Americans killed him. The CIA killed him using a fast cancer, <laughs> right? And Maduro has also said the president of of Venezuela has also said that there's evidence that the drone that tried to blow him up the other day. Or a week ago, or a year ago, whenever it was, a drone. They flew a drone into his while he was speaking, and tried to kill him, tried to blow him up on the stage. Maduro has also said that U.S. was behind that attack. So, so it's it's a hostile situation. Obviously, the U.S. and Venezuelan relationships are not as what they should be, right? And that's that's fine. But here we have this other thing going on, right? So, right now, Trump is saying, Trump and Pence are saying Maduro has no legitimate claim to power. Well, that's incorrect. He does. He's the elected official. Whether the elections are rigged or not, it doesn't matter. The elections in America are rigged. We know it. They, we proved it in court. Right? Democratic primaries are fake. We have fake elections. And we have the balls to go down a and tell the Venezuelan people, hey, you have fake elections and, and your president's got to go? <laughs> right? Look at the irony of it, right? Look at the, the, the insane irony of it. And I'll tie it into the yellow vest because it is, it is interesting how the protests in Venezuela are discounted, are, are actually elevated, and the ones in France are discounted because they're on the wrong side, or they're not on the side of the establishment. I'll try to explain that more in a minute. But. So you've got, you've got Trump and, and Pence saying Maduro has no legitimate claim to power. You've got Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, who's a former CIA director, right? Powerful fucking spook. Trump puts a spook as to lead the, the State Department. Right? Those guys, don't, they don't do evidence. They lie. They just... They're spycraft fucking guys. This is what they do. They spin a story and then, they, and, and then there's no truth to any of it. Right. That's who your Secretary of State is now. Right? You got John Bolton. That's the guy with the mustache, National Security Advisor. He's saying that Maduro worships a false god. <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just a propaganda machine, right? None of it, none of it has any any uh, basis in fact, right? It's just propaganda, it's bullshit. It's, it's slurring the other, the other team. And why are they doing it? They're trying to destabilize the country. What do they get? What's the plan? Well, they got the plan. The guy's name is Juan Guardo, right? Juan Guardo, Guardo! Nobody could pronounce his name. Guardo, Guardo, Ed, Juan Guardo, right? He's some, some young man, 38-year-old man, who stood up in the, in the plaza and said, I am the president of Venezuela. I am the president. Right? Can you imagine if that happened here? If someone said, stood up and said, I'm the president. The president of our country, the elected one. You remember the guy that you elected? He's not valid. Fuck him. Right? I'm the president. Right? That's what's going on. And the United States, along with uh, you know, all the Latin American countries, the ones that are terrified, Brazil and 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 the only one, the only holdouts there, I think, is Mexico and Uruguay, right? Are holding out, are supporting Maduro. But on the bigger picture, China, Russia, Mexico, all in support of Maduro. 
right? So the, 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 the U.S. Is, is, is backing someone, an unelected official, the national, what is, he's, he has a position, National Assembly. I don't believe he was elected or I don't believe that, I, I'm not really sure, but even if he was, it's just like a congressman of some sort. It's a very small elected position. He was never elected as president, but the United States finds it necessary to elevate this man to the forefront. Now, they, what about the protests? They're showing Fox News and the, you know, all the, all the, you know, the, the, all the jackoffs, the, 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 the bootlickers are saying that, that, that all the people are rising up for uh, Juan Guardo and they're opposing Maduro. Not true. There's about 100,000 protesters on each side of the fence, right? And, that's, and, and the Guardo ones are clearly supported by our CIA State Department, right? That's who's funding it. That's who's fueling it, right? But the other thing you fail to realize is that there's 32 million people in the country. And the United States is saying, we're doing the will of the people by, by supporting half of, half of a 1% a bunch of people out in the street that are saluting a guy that the rest of the country doesn't even know who he is, Eduardo, Juan Guardo. People don't even know who he is. Maduro is the president. You see that you see the problem there is that what the what your government America my fellow Americans is 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 happening is that the United States is sponsoring a coup they're supporting regime change they're supporting the 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 um, opposition force Syria Libya you know wherever we go uh, Iraq uh, how does that work out? How does regime change through, through brute force and tyranny work out? Right? They'll say, because Fox News right now is using all they have, the ideology, it's socialism! Socialism! <laughs> they're, on the t <laughs> right? they're, they're screaming from the rooftops right now. Social communists! Oh, it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> Luckily, there's nobody out here. Just me and the dogs. I love this park. So, so that's who. You, so that's what's going on in Venezuela. It's the U.S. extreme sanctions, squeezing them, breaking them, breaking them down, right? And they're calling it a humanitarian crisis. Uh, atrocity where their, their economy sucks but that's no grounds to go and overthrow their government what where do we stop if we allow that to happen as a, as American people and we say okay well yeah I guess so well uh, fucking yeah it's kind of, okay yeah we're gonna save the people of Venezuela <laughs> and, and we're gonna overthrow the government it doesn't you see you see the point that it doesn't stop and who's behind it and what's the motivation you know, the, the, the Venezuela has enormous oil reserve. They have one of the lar second largest gold reserves in the world, right? And they also have a nationalized oil system. Sitco, that's state, Venezuelan state oil, right? Venezuelan people don't pay for gas. It's like three cents to fill up a car. They have pluses. They have beautiful climate, beautiful mountains. They just have a very corrupt political system. So rather than go in and, and offer help the u.s goes in there and tries to destabilize the country and take their resources right put in exxon fuck it go <laughs> that's really what it is and that's not a that's not a uh, that's not an exaggeration that's precisely what's going on there's always a profit motive because we have a monopoly because we have we we are not capitalism or 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 democracy anymore we are a full-blown oligarchy full-blown monopoly in this country right and you support you support this administration in this move and you are no better than those people and you have no you have no uh, ground you have no ground whatsoever to keep arguing your point about a plan of, of draining a swamp you are supporting the swamp 
Right. So that's that's Venezuela. What else? Oh, so just a quickie on Sayoc, Caesar Sayoc, remember? Uh, the Patsy Bomber, Caesar Altari Sayoc. I, I haven't spoken about it because you remember I sent a letter and I sent a letter to him in his jail in uh, Metropolitan Jail <laughs> and I never got an answer. Right? So I did, I, the only thing I've done so far is there's no media coverage of it. Uh, I, I did look at the, the um, jail record. He still is registered as being in that jail waiting a trial that will come in spring. But there's been no mo most movements on his case. He is, in theory, still inside. He did not answer my, my letter that I wrote to him asking for an interview. And that's all we know about him right now. We'll just have to wait for the spring. Because that's mission done, right? Right after the election, November 6th, his job was to, well, that operation was to take people's mind off the ball and focus on how horrible Trump is. Kind of like the Covington kids, right? The high school kids. A similar thing. I don't think Covington, by the way, was a plan. I think that that was a, that was just three groups collide and the media got their hands on, you know, mega hat kids shouting down an Indian and they ran with it. I don't think that that was a plan at all, just for the record. So let's talk about in final, the final analysis is the yellow vest. Act 10, gilet jaune. Right, so here's the, here's the irony of, the, of the, the, the situation, right? In Venezuela, you have... You have people opposing the government, and the U.S. supports that. In France, you have people opposing the government, and the U.S. ignores it. Or not only that, calls them radicals, Antifa. They're fucking showing, showing the cars burning and the buildings on fire. Right? See the irony? You see the, see the problem there? Wake up, Spartans! <laughs> okay, so the, the Gilets Jaunes are fighting the oligarchy and winning. In Venezuela, the people are supporting no oligarchy and losing. And the U.S. is obviously on the side of the oligarchy, always. You can't call it capitalism. You can't, when Trump... And Pence look into the camera and say, we're fighting for freedom and democracy for the Venezuelan people. They're fucking lying to you. They're lying. They're lying to you. It's failed policy. Those guys are owned and operated by the six banks. You think the, the billionaires are laughing, shitting in their pants how funny this is. That Venezuela is about to get knocked off. Right. And it's going to get bloody because the U.S. gave them 72 hours, not the U.S. Venezuela, here's where it's going to get f fucked up. Because Venezuela, Maduro has said to uh, Trump and the Americans that you have 72 hours to get your diplomats the hell out of our country. And Trump said, forget about it. No way. So... There's the conflict. They're using the, the, the um, diplomats on the ground who may just get killed. And Juan Guardo may just get thrown in jail because he's technically a, uh, uh, someone disturbing the peace, someone who is, is, a, um, is, is a treason, treasonous. He's plotting to overthrow the government. In our country, we lock you up or at least retain you to find out that you are a terrorist, right? So Wardo is a terrorist organization, and when Maduro kills him or locks him up, he's within his, I mean, they're within their rights to kind of subdue a, a uh, you know, someone who's de declaring himself president and mobilizing radical, you know, forces. If they should arm themselves, then this is going to be a problem, right? So you've got the U.S., holding down their diplomats, again, Venezuela, holding the diplomats in the country 
who are likely going to get killed because, or jailed. And now you'll have a, a hostage crisis. Or a, and then the U.S., as Trump said, we're not taking military uh, options off the table, and they fly in the troops. And the Navy SEALs go and kill them. All right? Regime change, it has nothing to do with democracy. It has to do with gaining control of the resources. Right? There's no Starbucks. There's no McDonald's. There's no Bank of America. There's no Chase. There's none of our companies in Venezuela. On the corners, everywhere. That, that, that pisses off the corporations. Get in there. That's what it's about. It's not democracy. It's monopoly. Right? Get that oil money. Fucking giving people free gas. Charge them. Right? And the French are standing up, holding their ground. Taxed 40%. 45% on the 30 grand a year. Insane tax. And they're fighting back. Right? The French are fighting back. Gilets jaunes. Act 10. We are all gilets jaunes. We are not... Don't let the... Don't let the fucking fake media tell you that... What's going on in Venezuela is a fight for democracy, a fight for the people. It's the opposite, the exact opposite of what's going on. Socialism, communism, capitalism, those ideas are dead. All there is is the people versus the monopoly. It's the people versus the oligarchy. What side are you on? Who do you support? I know what side I'm on. I know who I'm behind. Marcus Conti reporting.